Welcome to Games Over Coffee Consulting. My name is Devon. People give me their games and I give feedback on their game design. If you're new here, welcome. We're going to be changing the format a little bit of the show going forward, not from today, but actually from about a month from now. I'm going to be doing game design consulting for games that specifically have storytelling in them. I want to help people try to figure out, you know, how to tell their stories better in video games. Okay, so anyway, so this game is called Beyond the Grave by Make It So Games. So what does this person want? What do you want? So whenever someone sends me a game, they fill out a questionnaire and make it so games said this in his questionnaire. The game loop will be just like Metroid once I implement it fully. The most important feedback I could ask for is the feel and the fun factor. I really want the player to have an experience where they need to learn and get skilled with the combat in order to make progress in the game. Different enemies require different tactics to defeat. I guess the advice that I'm looking for would be, is the combat too complicated? Like there's moves for walking, running, jumping. So for example, you could walk and punch or run and super punch, or then walk and jump or kick and run and jump and super kick. There's rolling, dive rolling, blocking. There's also stomping and throwing enemies. I'm not sure if I should add more or take some away. All right, so the dev wants to know if their game is fun. Should there be more combat, less combat to try to hone things in? The game itself is pretty bare bones. If you play this, there's a link in the description. It's being revived from what used to be a flash game. So right now it's still very early and there's only like three screens available. The fighting itself is pretty well polished, but as for what you do in the game, there's not a whole lot of goals. So when I played this game, I did have fun but I also didn't have fun. There, there was times where I was having a lot of fun. There was times that I was bored. So what's the difference between the two? It's really interesting with this kind of game because I can have fun sometimes and then not have fun other times, even though I'm doing basically the same thing over and over again, because like I said, it is pretty bare bones. All it is is just me fighting this single type of enemy over and over. So why was I having fun sometimes, but not other times? I want to compare this to a game that I talked about earlier called Blade of the Fallen. Blade of the Fallen was a game that was submitted to me that was basically a 2D arena. It's weird because that game has a lot less to do and it's a lot of fun. Like it's very addicting. So what's the difference here? What's the difference between those two games? I think basically what it comes down to is strategy. Strategy isn't always thought about in these terms and sort of action game terms. But if we're talking about strategy, what it means to like make a decision when someone is engaging with a game and bringing meaning to their decisions, that right there is strategy. So plain and simple, Beyond the Grave didn't have a whole lot of strategy whereas a game like Blade of the Fallen did. So then what causes that, right? How do you add meaning to choices? Strategy is an informed decision. So the player is trying to impart some sort of will upon the system of the game. So if we look at something like Super Mario Bros, you're not just you know going forward and platforming, you're platforming with intent. You might be running certain areas, you might be hopping on enemies in certain ways to get to certain areas. Whatever it is that you're trying to do in the game is what informs your decisions. Whether you decide to run, decide to jump, decide to not jump, all of those things are strategies. These aren't just random things that you just make up in your mind. They're usually informed by the goals of the game. So for example, in Super Mario Bros, you might try to make the best decisions you can in order to complete the level, right, to get to the end of the level. But in a game like Vampire Survivors, it's a little bit different, right, because your strategy is to stay alive as long as you can. So as a player, you're going to make decisions that will help you achieve that goal. But that doesn't mean that a game necessarily needs a goal to have strategy, because you can have toy box games that feel really fun, right? Not every game needs a goal. So this game doesn't have goals, but it doesn't really need goals in order to see if it's fun or not. For example, one of my favorite games of all time is Session. Uh, the skateboarding simulator. In session, there are goals that you can do. There's certain, you know, gameplay in that game, but I don't care about that. I don't play session to play the game part, the linear part. I play the session just to boot it up and start skateboarding just because I want to. And the reason why I like it so much is still because of that strategy. There is strategy involved when I'm playing that game. For example, I'm going to be skating around the area and I find a little spot and I think in my mind, hey, I want to see if I can do a certain trick off of that spot and see if I can land it. And then if I don't, then I'll try again. I'll try again. Maybe I'll try a different way. Maybe I'll try to get more air one time or more speed. And then once I do it, then great. And maybe I'll try a different trick or maybe I'll try a different spot or something. But that's constantly running in my mind. So despite the game not really having goals that I'm following, at least, I'm still creating them in my mind. So the same thing goes for things like tech demos or games that are in really early development. One of my favorite ones is Mario 64. In Mario 64, there's a story about how Shigeru Miyamoto 
uh, wanted to make sure that the movement was fun before he started building a game around the movement. And if you're building movement, how do you know it's fun? Well, in the area that they were building, they said was basically Lego blocks. And I don't know exactly what happened there. This is pure conjecture from my point of view. But what I believe was happening is while someone's playing that little test area, they're probably thinking, can I jump to that other side? Can I make this gap? Can I wall jump from here? Can I do that? Can I do this? Right? So they're testing out their skills and they're seeing if those little goals that they're creating for themselves can be achieved and if it's fun to achieve them. So with that in mind, thinking about Beyond the Graves gameplay, what's the little goals that I'm presenting to myself when I'm playing this game? Because it doesn't have whole goals in here just yet. When I'm playing the game, there's only one enemy. There's only one type of enemy. So what I'm trying to do is beat them up. Right? I'm just trying to destroy the enemy. And the moves that I choose to destroy the enemy don't have any strategic value. There's not a whole lot of reason to choose one attack over the other because they all basically do the same thing. In beat-em-up games, this is usually something that happens anyway, but the moves that you have in beat-em-up games usually have some sort of trade-off. For example, God of War, which this dev did cite as a game that he wanted to be like. So in God of War, you have different types of moves, but they're not just different. They all do something different. For example, you can attack regularly, but it'll be a pretty weak attack, but you can also have a strong attack. But the trade-off is that it'll be much slower. So do you do a strong attack while becoming more vulnerable, or do you do a fast, weak attack knowing that you're going to hit them pretty fast? Then there's also throwing the axe. Do you throw your axe to hit an enemy from far away and risk not having the axe with you at the next moment? You can see this in fighting games, in games that are just like, you know, player one-on-one, -on -one, you know, two-player games. When two people are fighting, they're choosing between a bunch of different moves, and one while they all do basically the same thing, which is just hurting the opponent, they are doing them in different ways. Each move has its own unique ability that has a trade-off depending on you know which one you're choosing. Some are weaker than others, some are stronger, some take longer. So I see a ton of potential in this game in Beyond the Grave because there's so many moves here. But I want to be able to stare in an enemy and figure out I want to do a specific move. For example, if you had different types of enemies, which I know you're planning to do, I'm going to kick this one instead of punch him because, you know, the punching doesn't really do much. But the kicks kicks do a lot. Or for example, you had like flying enemies that you couldn't hit on the ground and you could only do jump kicks, then I'd be doing those. The times in this game that I was having a lot of fun with were the times that uh, my tools met my intentions. For example, there'd be times that I would just spawn a whole lot of enemies and then I would use the jump, uh, the jump flying kick and I'd be able to dodge enemies by flying in the air and just keeping up you know, up here. That was a lot of fun. There was times where I would try to throw an enemy over an obstacle because I wanted to see if I could do it. So I would say that going forward in this game, I would create reasons for the player to do these other types of moves. Whether that means slowing down some of the moves so that the more powerful ones are more risky, or maybe that means having one super strong move, or maybe that means creating certain enemies or even environments that respond to certain attacks but not others. So I know Beyond the Grave is trying to be a Metroidvania uh, and that reminds me of some other beat em up games, which have different, vastly different experiences. Uh, the first one I'm thinking of is Dark Souls, which I'm not sure if is, is a Metroidvania, but it is something similar because you have a, a huge area. But in there, you have, you know, very, very methodical combat, but it's very different from a game like Dead Cells. Dead Cells is a Metroidvania, but their attacking is a lot more fast and it has to do more with exploring as opposed to attacking each individual enemy. And then there's another game that has to do with getting skilled at combat while you're exploring the area and it doesn't have a whole lot of exploration in it. Um, and that game is Sifu. Sifu has really, really complex combat, but that's its focus, right? The whole idea of playing that game is to grow your character's skill and get all of these different types of combos and moves. And also every single attack in there does something a little bit different than every other attack. Okay, so that's about everything that I have to say about this game. Thank you so much for submitting this game, Make It So Games. I hope what I've said was somewhat helpful. Okay, so as we go forward in this channel, currently I have Beyond the Grave, which we just did, uh, Mouse and Bunny Tetris, is our next one. Then we have Let Him Cook, 17 Waves, and Ren Sword. Ren's, Ren, Ren, Ren Sword? After Ren Sword, or that, that last one, um, I'm going to be shifting my focus into storytelling games. So if you like me talking about games and you want to submit a game to me, 
Um, I'm going to be talking about specifically storytelling ones. So if you have a game that you feel like you need help with when you're telling the story in your game or you want to see if you can have more empathy in your game, you can submit it to me. There's a link in the description and the form is not working at the moment because I'm changing it to something different. So if it's not up when you click it, then you can send me in an email, uh, info at gamesover.coffee. And if you're not already part of the Discord, check out the Discord because I'm there also. And so are a bunch of other developers and we're all talking about games all the time so that is all i have for today so thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys later peace